Yes, thank you. Yes, welcome everyone. Uh, if possible, if you could open your camera, it's always nice to see who am I talking to. And I already see quite a lot of you, so that, uh, that's already nice. Yeah, I see there's some people from Denmark. So hello. Uh, I'm actually right now in Portugal. Um, and uh, I'm 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 walking the Camino. I mean, uh, from from the uh, from the south, the south up uh, um, the coast. So I invite you uh, to the sacred space of uh, of the Camino between churches and crosses and a lot of sun. And I was a bit nervous today to find a a room where the internet is stable. But uh, it seems that I got it. Uh, uh, that brought me a bit into um, today's walking. Brought me um, a bit into in a, into the awareness how often I am uh, thinking about the future, worrying about the future. So this was now worrying about being able to make it to the meeting and having an internet. Um, so I would like to start with a very simple meditation of inviting you into present moment awareness, a very basic Buddhist practice, which is uh, sometimes quite difficult. If there's something on your heart, you know, something your conceptual mind still try to figure out right now. So it's sometimes not so easy to really be here um, with what is and grounding yourself into present moment awareness, which is probably the foundation of any kind of other practice to start there, to find ways to be here and be who you are. And then from there, uh, go into uh, other practices. So let's... Uh, Take our feet as the son or daughter of the Buddha. And uh, let's appreciate that we are doing this together as a Sangha. And isn't it fantastic that our little Sangha here is uh, like the mixture of, I, I don't know where you are, most of you are somewhere in the United States, probably around San Francisco, but Maybe there's also some people from New York here, but then there's also me in Portugal and um, Kate from Scotland. <laughs> Hi, uh, Paul and Eva from Denmark. Uh, so let's rejoice you know, that we are connected over the big ocean. So let's uh, take a few moments to adjust your posture. And if you like, you can close your eyes. If you uh, prefer to Sit with open eyes, that's completely fine, and your gaze is relaxed without particularly looking at something. And let's take a few moments to shift gear from the doing to the being mode. It also means that your attention or your awareness slides into the body. And then uh, follow, uh, follow the question, uh, how am I right now? How am I? How am, how am I now? 
uh, without going uh, into the conceptual mind, but uh, riding onto that question into the felt sense of the inner weather. How am I now? And with breath and, breath and awareness, as best as possible, you embrace what is here now. So with the in-breath, sliding into the felt sense of your body, embracing, and then with the out breath, uh, it might be possible to let go a bit in the shoulders and the belly. So unnecessary tension can, can release. and unhook from the thinking. The thoughts continue to arise, but they, they are not so important right now. There's also the sounds in your surroundings. Present moment awareness. Past exists only in thought, future exists only in thought. And the lifeness is available only in this moment. And sometimes it is possible to connect with a sense of appreciation and gratitude just for the fact to be alive. If you can the heart open to that, to the mystery, the miracle of you being here, you being alive. And with the breath and awareness embracing, welcoming the guests in the guest house of the body. And with the out breath, out breath softening and opening. And creating your own sanctuary for yourself in this meditation practice a sanctuary where you are welcomed and where you can relax, where there's no pressure, where you can be just yourself uh, without falling asleep. A sanctuary of being of feeling of breathing.
and then into our virtual temple here. Let's invite our mentors and teachers and the different lineages who are uh, present here. I'm sure there's many, not only Tibetan lineages. So let's rejoice in the in the diverse in the in the in the buffet of the Buddhist teachings, the diversity, the different lineages, the different tastes. Uh, which are present here. And uh, invite your teachers and you know, the ones you met or the ones you're inspired by and invite them into this, uh, into our temple, also for the others. So that they bring their blessing and their healing energy that they bring them into this space, into this shared space for all of us. So for me, it's the soul and the Dalai Lama and Lama Sopa Rinpoche and many other teachers of the Tibetan tradition and now being on the path to Santiago Compostela. And of course, I connect very much with Jesus and his 12 disciples. So I would like to invite that also into our space. So you invite yours and uh, feel that you have actually the, the capacity to do that, to invite their blessings. be a channel uh, for their presence for the others. And then we can all open to that field of healing, that field of blessing, bathing us from, uh, from all directions, also from behind. So feel how your body can even open and soften more because uh, you feel safe. You feel loved and seen. And invite a particular the hard quality of your teacher, of your mentor, of your role models, the hard quality. The open heartedness. And then notice uh, if you feel a change in the felt sense of your body. It is invitation. and returning and resting. So there's the content of your experience. 
sensations, sounds, and feelings, thoughts. And the more you open to the flow of this experience, less you suffer. And the more you resist, the more you struggle against what is happening right now, the more you suffer. So see if you can soften and open a little more, slide into more peace with what is. And whatever arises, there's an attitude of, yes, this too. Yes, I will, I feel this too. I allow this too. I am with this too. And then you rest. Could you allow yourself to find that place of rest in the midst of your experience, in this sanctuary of your safe place? Could you allow yourself to find that place of rest without uh, changing anything, without controlling, fixing, interfering, Just opening and opening, giving space, giving space. And feeling everything. Yes, and then take your time to slide out of the meditation. If you have your eyes closed, you open them, still staying connected with your body. So that is a first reflection I want to um, invite you into is um, you know, your own daily meditation practice. Do you feel it is like a sanctuary for yourself, something like a healing space where you can, where you feel drawn to, where, uh, where you feel nurtured by? And if that's not the case, if it's more like some some 
some some uh, practice of duty or struggling or trying to get somewhere um, yeah, then maybe it's worth to um, try to uh, introduce that sense of welcoming uh, which I try to share with you in our meditation now uh, like a, a healing space where you can relax where you can open where you nurture yourself your own sanctuary yeah. um, so that you really uh, are drawn back to your meditation practice. So I'm looking really forward to um, uh, go through the 37 practices with you, this text. Um, and I particularly love the translation and the commentary of Ken McFloyd. It's probably, it might be a teacher you came across. It's definitely worth it to, uh, to, to uh, check him up. And his book is called Reflection from Silver River. And I usually don't recommend books, but uh, th this one I, I really would like to recommend. Uh, it's a beautiful, short little book. And uh, if you are not, uh, if you don't, uh, if you don't want to con uh, continue these teachings, still, I think, um, I think this book is really worth it. So it is, contains this translation of the 37 practices. And each verse, he gives a little commentary. So the 30, 37 practices for bodhisattvas is one of the most revered texts in, in the Tibetan tradition. Everyone is studying it in, in the monasteries. And I have received this teaching from Lama Sopa Rinpoche and uh, since uh, the publication of Ken McLeod's book, I, I taught it maybe four or five times and uh, people really love that book. So uh, yeah, it's really worth to, to buy it. Even if you have many other books in your shelf which you have not read, this one is, uh, is really special. So Ken Mc, uh, uh, Tong Mesanpo is the author of this 30, 37th verse, or you could, you could say 37 uh, poems describing and giving inspiration for the life of the Bodhisattva, how to, how to make your life meaningful, um, how to uh, make compassion, kindness, uh, nonviolence, helping others, how, that, how, how to make that the center of the mandala of your life. And, I guess we all of us, we have already a sense of that, of the softness in our heart, of the, the natural care which wants to come into the world. And so this book is such a beautiful inspiration to keep that flame alive and, and to help us to, um, uh, to shine, to glow to glow our care and our empathy and our love without burning out, uh, without falling in despair and uh, really also based on a firm practice of self-acceptance and self-love and self-care. That's so, so important. The, the, the text is a lot about uh, what is called lojong, uh, mind transformation. So we are going to explore how to particular be and respond to triggers in our life. 
situations people would trigger us and to see those moments and the experiences of being triggered and falling in our reactivity and being challenged to see these uh, moments in our daily life not as an obstacle uh, to the spiritual path but actually as our spiritual path and as opportunities to open our heart and uh, grow on the path and that's of course such a such a treasure that just that idea because our life is full of those uh, challenges and difficult experience on on a daily basis uh, and they will are, they are going to continue so there is no way that we can do some lifestyle changes uh, to avoid uh, challenges so I have been walking now since a week and I tried to find a good hotel and I didn't. Everywhere I go, it's just the challenges. Yeah. So now now I now I found this place which is quiet and I have internet and now I just hear that there's a party going on. So fortunately you don't hear it because Zoom is uh, um, filtering it out, but I feel disturbed by it, yeah. And this is how life is, you know. I, I mean, uh, like you, 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 you think you can move outside of the city, and then it's quiet, but it isn't, yeah. Or it's just like it's, and it's it's fascinating again for me to even after so many years having heard these teachings, I still have this kind of secret hope there will there there will be this perfect room somewhere on the Camino where everything, where the temperature is fine and there's everything, and it doesn't exist, yeah? And and then I can sit and suffer, which I also, of course, sometimes do, yeah? So then, then I suffer, but then I notice it. And uh, and then, you know, again, in this, uh, in the 37 practices, to be reminded again, again, hey, that's exactly it. That's the moment uh, to practice. That's the moment to wake up. So how to do that? So we get inspiration in that text. Yeah, but like with this family, you no, know, there's so many options. So for me now to use this as a practice opportunity. Yeah, I could. Um, uh, I mean, loving kindness meditation, emptiness, Tonglen, yeah. So also uh, right now because it stresses me a bit because I can't I can't focus as much as I want to focus right now because this is uh, children party they sing uh, and so on in in Portuguese. It's quite cute, yeah. but, but just right now it's just, I could do something else. Um, so what I now need to do is, of course, uh, to take care of my own stress. And where does this stress come from? It comes from, you know, wanting to be a good teacher, like, you know, wanting to uh, give a good performance why and why because i want people to like me yeah and like everyone else uh, i mean that's a superficial a superficial level of my being but it is it is there so that's how i can and then i can um no by just um sharing this i i feel more connection with you as human beings we are together you know you understand what i'm going through and how i feel and so ah now i feel already a bit more uh relaxation in this and i kind of i notice wow yeah okay if this is not my best teaching so that, that's fine it's good enough you know and then i remember lama Yeshe, Relax. It's good enough. You know, it's good enough. So, and then I calm down, and my heart opens. Maybe I can 
then add a bit of a Tonglen twist in it and like, okay, may all may my experience of now struggling with this noise and distraction uh, may this free all the people who are right now sitting somewhere wanting to perform are afraid may they you know may they be freed of their suffering so so that's the idea in low john yeah? each in each situation instead of um, fighting it and feeling bad about yourself and uh, trying trying to be somewhere else to right there in that situation with what is happening in your feelings to um, to, uh, to to see that as your practice. And, and this is uh, I mean this is so uh, so precious so, uh, so fortunate when we have this kind of teaching. So what is it for you right now in your life? Yeah. So what's the edge of you? You know, where is what is happening in your life which you really something that which you don't want to happen? Yeah. That could be something in the outside. Uh, it could be something, some health issue, something internally. Uh, so where are you challenged right now in, in your life? What's your edge? What what is uh, what is what 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 prevents you from having a sound sleep? Uh, where you where where do you feel stressed? Where where in your life do you feel it's too much? Uh, and um, I I assure you, um, you know we are all we all have this these edges and. Probably most of us uh, are, have uh, things happening in our life which are a little too much or much too much. Somehow life always comes with these things, with exactly this kind of problems where we feel a little bit too much. I don't know what to do with this. I, 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 I can't find my way out of this. Somehow life comes together in that way for us, for all of us. And the, the Lojong practice and this text, the 37 practices, uh, invites us to, to look at these, exactly these feelings and these situations and see them as uh, the opportunities to wake up, the opportunities to increase our capacity to love. Yeah. And then to ask how. Yeah. I think someone, Tom, you want to say something? Yeah. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. I so can hear you. Something you said uh, really resonated with me. Last mm -hmm. night I was watching on Netflix a program about chimpanzees and uh, chimpanzee behavior. And, you know, mm. chimpanzees are, are our closest living relative. And a lot of what they're doing is trying to make friends with each other, to have alliances and so on. And I was thinking when you said the desire to be liked is superficial, yeah. uh, I think uh, I think it's very a very deep part of our animal nature. Uh, a desire to be liked, loved, cared about, form alliance. Mm. And so far as how that fits in with my edge, I I feel really pretty comfortable and happy this morning. You know, you might catch me on another day and mm. I'll, I'll tell you about terrible suffering. But right now, I'm at peace. I'm happy. Life is good. Um, mm. I'm just trying to accept who I really am, you know, uh, and who I a lot of who I am is a chimpanzee. Or something like a chimpanzee, basic, basic animal drives, and then all of the things that have come on top of that, you know, with culture and language and so on and so on. Uh, what else do I want to say? Yeah, just I was on a message board earlier of a meditation message board, and people were talking about anxiety and. Uh, feeling like a failure at meditation because they still had big problems with anxiety. I have, I, 
I've been meditating a lot for a long time, and I still sometimes have big problems with anxiety. Uh, I think it's something that I was born with. My mother's told me stories about when I was a little kid. You know, I have some sort of anxious nature. It's just part mm. of my genetic makeup. Uh, meditation may change it, but it hadn't so far. And uh, so it's just acceptance, acceptance of who I really am. I guess that's my edge. Mm, yes. Yes. Accepting who I am. A human being with feelings. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you are right. The, the, the longing to be liked and to be part of a group uh, is uh, is really uh, a, a deep instinct in all of us. Yes. Mm. yes. So let's look at the text. Start with the text. So it starts with. Uh, the invocation, Namo Lukashvarya, Namo Lukashvarya, which is the short for Avalokiteshvara. The Lord of Compassion. So that's what uh, Tongmei Sangpo um, starts the text with, a homage to compassion, a homage to love, a homage to kindness. And maybe we can uh, pause here for a moment and uh, feel in our heart our own capacity for kindness, for care, for compassion. which we all have, it's innate. And, and, and where do you feel, where do you feel when you care about someone? How do you feel that? If you like, you can close your eyes. It's easier for you to connect with that. And you bring your attention to your children or to your partner or to a good friend. Or other people who like where you would say they open my heart, but what what do, what do you actually mean when you say that you, you open my heart? So how does that feel? And uh, we talk about the heart, but of course we are not talking about the physical heart. Maybe you can you know, open that inquiry also into your hands and into your face and into your eyes. Maybe the way you you look, you, you, how, what comes out your, of your eyes changes. Maybe you feel it also in the belly. Maybe it's more. Maybe you feel it more like as an as a as a move. You know, it's something you want to move, you want to touch, you want to embrace, you want to kiss, you want to hold. It's such a such a precious capacity we all have.
let's bring that into our meeting here now also. That we are here as human beings with feelings and we all have that softness in our heart and that capacity to take care of each other. It's likely that we personally will not meet so that you can make me a coffee or something like that. Or I can uh, uh, I can take care of you and make you a meal, uh, but we have that capacity, and it would make us happy to take care. And I know, I mean, you know, some of you know each other, and uh, you are involved in the Dharma Collective, so you you have that sense also as a as a sangha to each other. It's such a, I mean, this is a, this is something to live for, yeah? to live and die for it. And it doesn't have, it doesn't have anything to do with Buddhism or spirituality or something. It's a basic human capacity, that capacity to have, to open your heart to others. And see if you can breathe it in and breathe it out. And uh, Ken McLeod has a very short uh, definition of what a bodhisattva is uh, in, in the commentary and he says, a bodhisattva is someone who breathes compassion, breathes compassion in and out. It's not like a, a very philosophical definition, but it, so it's, it's that the breathing in and out of compassion, softness. And um, sometimes in the Buddhist tradition, I notice there's a too much uh, emphasis on understanding what compassion is, you know, what is it like different kinds of compassion and steps to compassion and we can read about brain, uh, uh, brain research in compassion, and what changes in the brain when there's compassion, big books of compassion, uh, we can read and you know, compassion research and compassion training and, and all that stuff, but uh, Sometimes I feel this very simple, straightforward, that what we all know gets lost a bit. That it is a felt sense. It's something, something we feel in our body. Something very common and familiar. You know, breathing in, in and out compassion. And having the, having the space actually right now to be in it. You know, because we are we are a bit like committed now, like being in a in a meditation room. So we stay here, so we don't go to our um, phone or uh, you know running around trying to be productive. Uh, but we actually right now we we take this precious time to be together as human beings, and there is actually some space to give uh, for that softness in your heart without needing to do anything. You know? It's just so beautiful to feel that capacity. And I'm a bit, I'm not very clear what I actually mean with compassion. And I'm not also, def I, I'm not defining it. Uh, what's, what's love, what's compassion, what's sympathy, sympathy, empathy, and all that. I don't do that. Uh, and I, I love it that I don't do it because it's all, you know, it's kind of the same. It's all the same. It's like that tasty, uh, full, it's just good. 
receiving and giving care and do, and and feeling into it uh, in 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 this relaxed state where we don't need to uh, we don't need to think oh how do i ex express this right now in your hands in your heart and then because we are in this field now together even physically we are not together we can kind of almost feel like we are surrounded by it can okay. feel it like surrounding us not it's not just coming from you but it's like surrounding you that's also why i uh, did this meditation in the beginning to invite our mentors yeah like how that you know, feel how they are around you, you know, all these compassion angels. And they are so happy that uh, we are bringing it into the foreground right now. And then also remember the br bring moments of compassion and kindness you have received in your life yeah i mean as you know when you walk uh, you uh, you experience that a lot like you know like people giving you something people inviting you or you know something like that but but it's um so many moments where we have received kindness and compassion and all from friends, from, I mean, this meeting is, the Dharma Collective meeting is, uh, is an expression of that kindness, of that compassion. It's volunteers who are keeping it running, you know, taking care that, that it's happening in the website and so on and so on. So this is all around you. So let's uh, stay a few moments here and breathing. Namo Lokateshwara, yeah? Homage to compassion, homage to kindness, homage to care. Isn't that what our life is about? Isn't that what wants to emerge from you into, the, into your life, into your relationship, into, into the world? No, homage to compassion, homage, homage to Karuna, Maitri, Bodhicitta. Well, that's really something to bow to and to take refuge into. Uh, to throw your life, to make it your North Star in life. Karuna, Maitri, Bodhicitta. even without defining the differences, but the, the, the heart quality, something in your, you know, the heart knows, the heart knows. And then we can intensify that or bring some urgency into it uh, by um, remembering death. Death is certain and the time of death is uncertain. So for sure we will, we will die and we don't know when. And um, if you If you uh, find yourself agreeing that love is really important, opening your heart, 
giving and receiving kindness and love, then uh, remembering death might, you know, might, might change our priority a little. You know, how many moments in your life do you give yourself to feel what we are feeling now? How important is it for you? And is there room for more emphasis? on cultivating the heart. And we all know that it all starts with I don't know which word, word to use because they are also so overused, but I, I don't know, but self-love, self-compassion, self-acceptance. I don't know, I, I don't know why I don't like these words anymore. It's just because everyone is using them so much, but how do you say it in a different way? It's, it's this really, really on your cushion, in your sanctuary, in your meditation practice to, uh, to feel more and more comfortable with who you are, to feel more and more comfortable under your own skin. Because, uh, because whatever part of you arises, whatever process is happening, whatever feeling is arising, you are capable of meeting it with kindness and love and care. Are you? And I hope so. Uh, because otherwise, otherwise helping others is just a joke. You know, helping others is just a way not to feel uh, yourself. It's just an escape. So this is really the foundation of the Bodhisattva, Bodhisattva's, Bodhisattva way of life. It's, uh, there's the, the image of putting the oxygen mask first on your own face you know, in, in the airplane. So that's, uh, that's what your meditation practice could, could do for you. That could be that oxygen, oxygen mask on, on your face first. Yeah? And taking care of, of yourself. And learning technology, inner technology to be with difficult feelings. This is what uh, Ken McLeod's uh, commentary is. So when he goes into the into the poems around difficult situations, so uh, the commentary on of Ken McLeod is a lot about uh, giving us inspiration on how to be with feelings, how to feel our feelings completely, how to transform feelings how to lose the fear of our own feelings. This is really the, one of the foundation practices of, this, of his commentary. So we will look at that in the different situation, how to be with, how to, how to lose the fear of fear, how to lose the fear of sadness, and how to grow with feeling our feelings. Namolok I, I see that a few comments. I don't know if, uh, if these are questions. No. Okay. So maybe, uh, uh, it's, so you can, uh, if you have a question, you can just uh, raise your hand or start to speak or a comment. 
Namalukiteshvara. Now, this is also uh, the beginning of the text is uh, pointing to the uh, to the power of um, the bhakti of devotion. Yeah, folding your hands and and bowing to uh, something. Um, so as a bodhisattva uh, as a bodhisattva baby, I uh, I really recommend uh, to have like a uh, and probably many of you have. I say these things because I don't I don't know you really, so I don't know what how your practice looks like and your how. But what is really helpful is uh, to have an altar at home where you literally do the vow yeah, to, uh, to, to compassion, to love. Bhakti, to the devotion. Namo Lokoteshwara. I, I take refuge into compassion. I take refuge into Karuna, Maitri, Bodhicitta. So then comes the homage. And this is to Aluk Avalukteshvara, to, to the Buddha of compassion. He pays homage to that, to him. You who see that experience has no coming or going, yet pour your energy solely into helping beings. My excellent teachers and Lord all seeing. I ever humbly honor you with my body, speech, and mind. So this is the homage to Avalokiteshvara, to compassion. You who see that experience has no coming or good. That refers to the insight into emptiness. And we will look into that uh, while we go through the text, what he actually means with this. But it is um, it is an important uh, beginning of this text that after Tong Mitsangpo pays homage to compassion, he brings homage into homage to emptiness homage how things exist and not how they appear. Well, you will see that experience has no coming or going, yet pour your energy solely into helping beings. So this is such a profound, two profound lines. They really describe the two wings, what is also called the two wings, the Bodhisattva, you know, when the Bodhisattva like an eagle open, open, open his or her wing. The two wings are the wisdom teachings on the one hand and the compassion teachings on the other hand. So the Bodhisattva develops both wings, the wisdom and the compassion wing and brings them together. And with that flies into awakening on these two wings. Compassion, wisdom. So the wisdom wing is about uh, experiencing reality as it is. Looking through our projection. Because we are confused about reality. We are confused because we, we, uh, we experience a, a distortion of reality. We distort reality. We are not in touch with reality as it is. And this distortion is the dualistic split between subject and object. We make up a separation between me, an uh, I here, and uh, objective reality out there. So that's the dualistic, 
dualistic distortion. And the wisdom, which is described in the first line, the wisdom is seeing through that distortion, seeing that separation is a conceptual overlay, it's a projection. And realizing that it is this distortion which makes us suffer, it is this distortion which makes us um, self-centered. So the Bodhisattva acquires the technology and meditative practice to look through that dualistic split, through that distortion of reality. Yet pour your energy solely in helping beings. So yet, yeah, this is a very, uh, very important inquiry. On one hand, when we believe that things, including ourselves, exist in the way we appear, and the so-called outside world appear, uh, we might felt we might feel overwhelmed by the suffering in the world. So if you are in a situation or you have the recurrent experience that climate change and whatever, you know, whatever is happening in the world is overwhelming you. Um, so that there is a resignation or a giving up or your feelings towards what is happening are not uh, are destabilizing you, then you are missing the wisdom part. Yeah, you are lost in your projection. On the other hand, if you in your practice come to a place of, yeah, it's all empty, it's all a projection, it's all in my mind, so it doesn't matter what I do, then you are missing the compassion part. So in Buddhist practice, it's so important to find the middle way between this kind of nihilism, everything is empty, it doesn't really matter, or realism, everything exists in the way it appears to me and it's horrible and we go all down the drain and I better give up and I can't do anything. So that that's the two extremes. And the practice of the Bodhisattva um, helps us to find that middle path. Yeah, Lo Lorna. Lorne. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Lorne. Yeah. I was wondering if you could speak to the. So there's the compassion of what is directly experienced, and there's the compassion for conceptual experiences. So like mm -hmm. global warming is a conceptual experience versus the direct experience of, of suffering, you know, it, I mean, I had the direct experience of it inside, inside, and then I had the direct experience with human to human, to human, like in context. And, and do you think there's a difference? I do. I, I do. Yeah. I think How? there is something on a mental sphere, and then there mm. there's there's something that is directly felt. Like it takes mind to cultivate compassion for global warming, it takes constructs, oh. and then there's mm. direct relationship with living beings uh, that are mm. ex experiencing suffering that have relationship to this mm. this living experience. Yeah. So when I uh, when I um, think about people who uh, 
will suffer from global warming. Then when I use concepts, but the compassion, the compassion I feel to them, that's a felt experience. Well, I would say that the, the global warming is the concept. If you were actually feeling directly uh, uh, like uh, somebody in hunger, somebody in heat, yeah. somebody in uh, the yeah. actual uh, direct experience of it versus an idea mm -hmm. now projected yeah. onto a, yes. a virtual reality. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why do you ask that question? Um, I think there's something I was thinking, I was also a monk for 15 years and I was grounded in Theravada and, mm -hmm. um, and the, and the compassion was about very much a direct relationship, like with the Sangha, with other members and very, and not as much on a, on the conceptual level. And I did hear a teaching of all the different levels of compassion at some point and that there was a, 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 a yeah. Some, I don't remember them so clearly, but I was—I I think I was speaking to that the, of the different um, types of compassion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can't. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure what to say. Maybe it's because I'm not fresh, but. Uh, uh, is it uh, something you? you struggle with or what 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 would be the i mean for your own practice or so would that would it make does yeah, that have an this, impact this reflection there's the suffering of the concept of global warming that we're all mm. that we can be struggling with and then there's yeah. the direct experience of experience yes. of suffering yes there is a difference there sure yeah, yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, conceptual suffering uh, at where mm. we are, you know, as beings now, versus mm. um, directly facing a, a, you, know, the, you know the experience mm. of of, um, of maybe hardship that turns yeah. into suffering. Yeah. And is that a, is there a problem in that? What uh, a challenge for you? I think, well, yeah, I mean, moving towards the direct experience and the conceptual, I was, I, I, I'm looking at the, you know, uh, I was wondering the, the place of this conceptual suffering, the, the place of having an idea of, like, I'm projecting in my view that there's this world, mm. and then we collectively are affirming that. Mm. And, and not that it mm. isn't so, but it's part of a collective affirmation. And then that's yeah. causing suffering and yes. yet we're trying to fix it and that's mm. causing suffering mm. and the the ideal of fixing a world is causing suffering the um mm. it, i don't know to yeah. what end does that stop yeah i can see the profound dignity of your question <laughs> yeah uh, mm. Mm. Yeah. Any ideas? Any does anyone have an idea? Does anyone want to join? Yeah. Yes. Noam or uh, you Yuli, yeah. You are you need to unmute yourself. I can't hear you. Okay. Eva?
I don't know if that is there something. Uh... No, I can't hear you. I now. Now it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I I don't know, but I I think I I can recognize the 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 discrimination the, the difference between the two levels because I have been very overwhelmed of the climate situation and on a very conceptual level and a lot of worries mm. and I can also see that it's connecting to some more, maybe more personal fear of uh, experience of the world falling apart but I have now I have something that's extremely helpful for me is when I get in touch with direct experience even hearing about people suffering or you know there was very dry period this summer and a, a lot of uh, animals and plants was uh, they they was influenced by it I just do tumbling on the spot it's mm. the only thing that helped me because that I can do in the direct experience that I not can do on the conceptual level. So mm. if I have a direct experience of, of hearing, seeing, feeling the concrete suffering and do tongueling on the spot, then uh, I don't fall into despair. Mm -hmm. And, and there mm. I see the difference. I cannot mm. do tongueling on mm. the spot on a conceptual fear mm. that I'm building mm. up about the situation mm. in the world. It's, I have to have yeah. the feeling tune, the feeling taste. Yes. And for me, that's mm -hmm. a big dif different. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you, Eva. Yes, that makes sense. Uh, the, the, the immediate uh, turning to your feelings in the body and doing the Tom Land practice. Yeah. Not getting lost in turning towards the feelings and using the feelings to develop the capacity for compassion, for love. Yeah, I, I hear an answer in some of that. The uh, the conception was almost like tuning in a radio to a certain frequency or to a certain spectrum, mm. and mm. then and then going and working with it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, there's someone, uh, Julie again, or yeah, can you? Hear yeah, me? yeah. I was just um. I, I was going to ask a question that might confuse things more, or I was just wondering if um, we, um, Lauren was talking about um, the uh, concepts over experience, and I, and it might be too simple, but I was wondering, is there a relationship between the experiential and compassion versus the concept of of like compassion so so um so then and and i was thinking there neither are better like mm. like i have experience of compassion that's a priori and and has no need for language and then there's the compassion that I feel when I think about global warming or when I have a, a larger concept mm. or are those two things different? Are they the same or are they different? Mm. And how do I not get overwhelmed when I go to the conceptual 
um, and you know that that kind of was interesting to me of what Lord is. Mm. Yes, but do do you think that compassion can compassion can be something conceptual? Is there a compassion which is conceptual? I think when you first started to talk about compassion, I was mm. really feeling it kind of radiating mm -hmm. and, and then you said it's outside of you as well it was very experiential mm -hmm. but then when we talk, think about um the idea of global warming or mm -hmm. for instance the folks who are suffering in hawaii i'm um, trying mm -hmm. to find the dna for folks those kind of ideas are very conceptual to me yeah um they're filled with compassion but Mm. Um, maybe they're also so um, conceptual or abstract that it's hard for me to bring it back into that mm. Um, mm. immediate feeling that you gave mm. me and you yeah. led us in, in, in yeah. meditation. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I think for me, uh, and that's why I... I don't know so much of, about compassion anymore. <laughs> you know, of course, I've read the books and I, I like compassion training and uh, but um, and I also I studied many years ago neuropsychology, so I know I, I, I used to know what's happening in the brain, but uh, I, I think I lot I I lost I, I lost a bit inter interest in that. So. Um, so that's why I'm also maybe a bit confused by the question. I mean, it's a good question, yeah. So it, I, I enjoy the conversation, uh, but, but for me, the I, just in my own life right now, the emphasis is on on the felt sense and like when I, of course, I also read the news, and if I uh, ha have some facts and that's conceptual. I'm always more into the body. So how does that make me feel that there is this and this and so? And then I then I work with that feeling. I take like uh, I breathe, like whatever said, like doing some kind of maybe Tonglen practice, but I just yeah. And then and then. Uh, uh, breathing out what is needed, but also um, it's not that I'm passive. I mean, I'm not saying um, I'm just breathing in and out compassion and that's what I uh, have to offer for climate change. In that kind of spacious uh, being able with my feelings, I feel like I have more connection with the wisdom on how to act and how to respond. So I'm not like, conceptually, I could get very confused about, oh, should I do this? Should I go for this demonstration? Should I plant trees? Should I do this and this? And then I get really like, but in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a place where I can feel my feelings, I feel I'm more connected with, in intuition every day what's what how can how can what can i eat what can i do today what how can i spend my money today uh, uh, how can i how can i be part of the solution but it's more like a, it's not so conceptual it's not like it, it's more like a feeling from the heart so that's that's how I respond to climate change. It's more like day by day um, allowing decisions to come um, from a place of wisdom, from a place of love. Yeah. Alex? Or if I also Alex. Uh, uh, hey, yeah. So, so Hi. I I really liked how you were sort of hitting on the to start this whole practice. You sort of have to see through the 
dualistic, you know, sort of approach or framework that we sort of start with that confusion. And it, this line in the intro where Ken sort of brings out this Tuck Mei Zung Po's quote of saying, all forms of suffering are like dreaming that your child has died, taking confusion mm-hmm. as real wears you out. And it's to this point of like he says in the intro to that is like, you know, you have taken your thinking and your explanations of the world very seriously and everyone's doing the same thing. And that, you know, when you live in those explanations, you're not in your actual life, but in a kind of confusion. Mm -hmm. And that Mm -hmm. you see that the struggle and pain you inflict on others and yourself is because of instead of opening up to the experience of life, you are enthralled and seduced by these Mm -hmm. explanations of life. And so a lot of what mm-hmm. we're talking about hits on that intro there. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. That's good. That was he he said this, he said this more, more clearly. So you have to read it in his commentary. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Alex. Yeah. And Eva. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, it it just was um a little more to that change from from the conceptual to the more feeling connection with with the the pain and the suffering of the climate change, but it also make a big change for me. You started with saying that compassion is something you receive and something you you share. And and I have a feeling of a very big change towards nature like like uh, receiving a lot of love <laughs> from uh, from nature by le- making that change from the conceptual anxiety and disaster to the the feeling connection and then mm. i have the sometimes very deep feeling that yeah we all in it mother earth too kind of uh, mm. deeper receiving compassion actually mm. from from uh, the nature it, it yeah. sounds a little weird but but it, it's a part of the, the changing from conceptual to the feeling uh, connection yes. and I think that's for me actually extremely helpful yes for sure uh, it would be a pity if we don't um as long as nature exists to get nurtured and feel the compassion and care of her. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's fine. Yeah. So let's take a few minutes to share the goodness of our meeting. Breathing, breathing in and breathing out compassion. I'm appreciating that um, we are starting to enter this uh, sacred space of the text of the 37 practices. Which makes, which made this one and a half hour really meaningful. So let's, let's connect with that glow or that radiation out from our meeting, from our temple. Take a, take a few moments to feel safe in the sanctuary of your own compassion, self-compassion.
And may all beings be happy. Okay, thank you very much. I hope to see you tomorrow. Uh, and have a nice day. Uh, your day starts now. I go to bed now. <laughs> okay. <laughs>